recently you must have seen that west bengal and central government were at loggerheads with each other due to the skipping of meeting by the chief minister of west bengal when the leader of opposition of west bengal was invited post that an incident occurred wherein the chief secretary was recalled by the central government and later on the chief secretary resigned and he was appointed as the chief advisor to the west bengal administration so these kinds of activities result into the stiffness of the relationship between the center and the state and ultimately impact the federal structure of our polity so in today's lecture what we are going to witness is that how chief secretary is appointed what are the tenure criteria what was the current issue what are the principal functions of chief secretary and we'll also discuss about the cooperative and competitive federalism so my name is anud sharma and we will discuss all these things in today's lecture and continuing for, for, forward from here what we realize is that these were the two issues that were in news first thing was that the central government recalled the west bengal chief secretary and asked the government of west bengal the chief minister of west bengal to relieve the chief secretary secretary immediately and post that a very unique incident occurred wherein the chief secretary retired as he was on the verge of retirement here as he was retiring that day but he had got extension for 3 months to continue on that position but the chief secretary retired the same day and he was appointed as the advisor and post that the central government issued a show cause notice so we will see that whether the government can do this or not so first of all if we discuss about the chief secretary the chief secretary is the senior most is officer of the state he is the at the apex of administrative hierarchy in the state or the head of the administrative hierarchy of the state he decides regarding the functions or he decides about the different departments that how they will function in the particular state he is the in charge of the general administration which forms the part of the portfolio of the chief minister he the chief secretary is a very trusted officer of each and every chief minister in all the states because he works in a close coordination with the chief minister and his counterpart his or her counterparts moreover the chief secretary is also the chief or the head of the all the secretaries in the state and is also called as the kingpin of the secretariat all the secretaries all the is officers work under in close coordination with the chief secretary because the chief secretary is the head of all the secretaries that is why his name is chief secretary because he works for the close coordination of the betterment or the smooth functioning within the state moreover how this chief secretary is appointed this chief secretary is chosen by the chief minister because the chief secretary has to work for the betterment of the administration of the state so the chief secretary should be a trusted aid of the chief minister so it is the chief minister who decides that who shall be the chief secretary for the particular tenure moreover as the appointment is the executive chief secretary is an executive action of the chief minister it is taken in the name of the governor as you all know that all the decisions taken by the all the decisions taken by the chief minister or by the state all the executive decisions are to be taken in the name of the governor so the appointment of chief secretary is also done in the name of the governor this is basically the executive action of the chief minister so because it of being it being an executive action all these decisions are to be taken in the name of the governor of the particular state moreover if we talk about chief about chief secretary so the chief secretary positions are not defined anywhere in the constitution the position of the chief secretary is not defined anywhere in the constitution it is defined as per rules of business and conduct of business of the government of the state so these conduct and rules of business of the state vary from state to state you cannot say that it will be same for the state of west bengal to the state of uttar pradesh to the state of gujarat to the state of punjab to the state of tamil nadu to the state of arunachal pradesh they all vary with respect to the different states so the chief secretaries position or chief secretary's powers have also evolved gradually with respect to different states as the fairies or the functions are variable or are different 
So there is no fixed tenure for this post as the chief secretary holds this position at, until and unless the chief minister wants the chief secretary to hold that position. Until and unless the individual or the chief minister wants that the chief secretary should continue or that person should continue at that particular position, that till then only sir, the chief secretary or that particular individual continues to hold that position. Now, what are basically the recruitments or the understandings or recruitments and posting mechanism? So, this is basically that the chief secretary belongs to an IS is an IS officer. Now, there are three All India services in India. One is IS, second is IPS and third is Indian Forest Services. So, these are the three All India services. So, IS is falls under that particular service. So, the members of this service are recruited by the center as all of you must be preparing for this service or maximum of you must be preparing for these services. So, you shall be recruited or the members of this service are recruited by the center and then they are placed under various state cadres then they are allocated the state the cadres where they need to function where they need to perform their role and they have the liability or they have the responsibility to serve both the center and the state as they are appointed by the center and they are serving under the state so they have to maintain an equilibrium or balance between functioning or maintaining an equilibrium between the center and the state that is the responsibility of an is officer or the bureaucrat that bureaucrat needs to serve both center and the state and to create a comprehensive comprehensive policy for the betterment or the better functioning of that particular state. Moreover, this All India Service stands in the unitary characteristic of Indian Federation because All India Service is a part of unitary characteristic or it shows a tilt towards unitary characteristics in our Indian constitution. Who is the controlling authority of these IS officers is the Ministry of Personal, Grievances and Pensions. They are the controlling of authority in the central government of these IS officers throughout the nation, throughout our country. And for IPS officer, it is the Union Home Ministry. Right, all these officers are trained by the central government and then they are sent to the different cadres. Now, what do we understand by the IS cadre rules with specific to this case, we need to understand them as well. So, these IS cadre rules sir, came into existence in the IS and they were framed in 1954. Now, this case came under this particular issue came under news because of deputation because the individual who belonged to the particular state or particular uh, cadre now he was called on deputation to the center and the central government issued the notice that the person needs to be immediately recalled to Delhi and he should be sent to central government for his pending services. Now the cadre officer when the deputation is to be announced or when the deputation is done so the cadre officer with the concurrence of the state government may go with the concurrence of the state government and the central government be deputed to service under the central government or the state government that means if a kid deputation has to be done so the deputation is done in with the concurrence of that individual and with the concurrence of the central and the state government because what happens is that you cannot do anything or you cannot call back an is officer or call back an individual without the concurrence of the state or without the concurrence of the central government but there is a kind of intricacy or a kind of distinction which suggests or which states that if the decision is to be taken final decision or if there is a disagreement between the decision of the state and the center then the decision of the center shall supersede the decision of the state. So this gives a center an upper hand with regard to the deputation of the state IS officers. So this matter came into news because the state denied the order of the center and because of that a show cause notice was issued to the chief secretary or the ex chief secretary of the West Bengal government. Now the concurrence is required as I told you earlier as well that the concurrence is required of the IS officer and the procedure is that the establishment officer in DOPT that is Department of Personal Training invites and nominations from the state governments that to whom they want to send or whom they want for deputation or whom they want to send for deputation. Now that they receive this notice and then the panel in the DOPT <coughs> sorry then the panel in the DOPT observes and scrutinizes the information or the nominations and after they have scrutinized them then they decide that who shall be sent for deputation or not right then 
what happens that if somebody denies then then there is a course of action on refusal of order because as i told you earlier as well it is the central government which holds maximum power and if someone denies to the central government then there needs to be a penalizing activity now that penalizing activity suggests that this is basically in not clear this is ambiguous right so there are many rules in our indian legal system which are ambiguous similarly is this one rule which is ambiguous because it suggests that it suggests that rule 7 says that the authority to the institute proceedings and to impose penalty will be the state government while he or she was serving in the connectivity of connection of the affairs of the state as they have not clearly written it properly that on one side you see that the power is given to the center on the other side you see that they said that if any disciplinary action has to be taken then it will be taken by the center sorry by the state because the individual is working in close coordination or for the betterment of the state right now what are the principal functions of the chief secretary i told you earlier as well that he is the principal advisor to the chief minister he acts as the secretary to the council of ministers administrative head of the state secretariat secretary to the state cabinet and preparing agendas for the cabinet meetings when all the cabinet members meet the cabinet meetings cannot be held without the cabinet chief secretary in the state head of the state civil services and appointments of all the state civil servants is done under his uh, under his uh, his concurrence acts as chief coordination officer between the administration and the other departments chairman of the coordination committee and set up to look the inter departmental disputes that if there is any departmental dispute between the two departments or the dispute between the two departments so he will handle he will coordinate and he is the main channel of communication between the center and the state government that if any decision has to be taken or any kind of uh, decision has to be taken between or any communication channel has to be restored between the center and the state he is the main channel now when we talk about all the problems we already discussed as well this issues or this kind of creates stiffs the relationship or stifles the relationship between the central government and the state government so when we understand or when we talk about the idea of federalism in india one very important understanding of federalism is the understanding of cooperative federalism now what do we understand by cooperative federalism cooperative federalism is understood by this idea where the central government the state government and the local governments cooperate amongst themselves or share responsibilities amongst themselves for the better growth opportunities for the better welfare policies for the better governance mechanisms in this the center and the state are considered to be at equal parallels or at equal platform that is why we say that the center and state share a horizontal relationship when it comes to the cooperative federalism because you see that no one is above there is no hierarchy there is equality amongst the center and state when we talk about the cooperative federalism the entire purpose behind cooperative federalism is that it should not lead to any kind of friction or it should not lead to any kind of dispute between the center and state or conflict between the center and state so the cooperative federalism is also ensured it has to be ensured by the administrations by both center and the states but on the other side there is also an idea about competitive federalism the competitive federalism kind of changes the equation between the center and state it basically ensures that there is a competition between the center and state that the center and state are at vertical and the state governments is horizontal relationship right so this kind of creates an hierarchy this came into and practice especially post 1991 reforms when the, the state and the center are fighting for resources when the state and state and center are fighting for trades investments this is an event that is basically undertaken by the understanding <coughs> of what we say is the modern developmental market oriented world order so this is what is your understanding of competitive federalism now in the federal federal status of india competitive federalism is not bad but healthy competition has to be ensured that the center and the states are competing amongst themselves for better resources better trade better investment which will ensure economic prosperity for the people but if that competition is not healthy or if that competition is based on putting each other behind one then it relates leads to the problem amongst the center and the state and disturbs the equilibrium disturbs the balance of our federal polity so this is it with regard to today's lecture i hope you have understood we'll see you next time until then thank you very much be safe study hard and keep working for your dream and subscribe to our channel for further updates and further videos thank you